welcome back to another video of mine and this time we are actually not going to program at all but we are going to take a look at a simple speed test between the different rendering modes in OpenGL or the new OpenGL so the vertex buffer object and all of the older OpenGL like the immediate mode display list and vertex array and see which one is the quickest I have a little a call document right here which we are going to fill up the FPS the simplicity and support it so you can choose what uh, what display mode you should use by the way if you are using modern OpenGL uh, how you should then you probably should uh, choose this so the vertex buffer object because that's the only one which is supported in the modern OpenGL but we will see which one is the quickest so let me just quickly open up a terminal and uh, and let's start with the immediate mode because that's the first one which we have learned about and this is just simple height map so this is a 512 by 512 height map I can open this up so it's a simple height map generated from GIMP and the program is pretty much the same as it was in the original height map tutorial so I'm just using the vertex uh, so the vertex 3f and the immediate mode with a uh, triangle strip so gl begin gl triangle strip oh actually i just rendered two triangles with this triangle strip but uh, to make it a little bit quicker but uh, as you probably expected the immediate mode will be the absolute slowest rendering mode but let's not do spoilers but you will see all right and i also use this xyz.png texture it's just a simple texture as you can see as a texture on the height map let's see what else in here so there is nothing basically in the render height map function which you which is new basically what else do, did i do is basically commented out this uh, delay so we don't uh, no more use 30 fps aesthetically but the FPS is actually as much as it can be and I just count how many frames I rendered and also what is the elapsed time between the frames and every one second approximately one second I'm just going to write out how many frames I have rendered so I have but basically this code should be available in the description uh, so download all of them and test them out yourself even use other kind of height map or other kind of models which you want to test for okay so let's run this immediate mode immediately and see what this result it's a bit laggy it's it's a little bit more laggy than a bit laggy it's a very laggy it's basically unusable uh, by the way I don't use any kind of optimization like cooling faces or or, or other stuff B uh, basically I just uh, render the height map as it is so no first term cooling no back face cooling uh, no dynamic tessellation no level of detail nothing like that basically just render it as it is so how many frames per second it's 14 ish 15 ish frame per second so let me immediately write it here so 14 ish 15 ish uh, 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 frame per second it is very simple so I just write very simple right here and it is supported in new OpenGL no it's not supported in new OpenGL so let's go to the next one which is the display list and uh, yeah I don't want to uh, say any spoilers the display list as you probably remember almost as simple as the immediate mode so let me quickly open that up uh, right here in the render height now the only difference is that I generate a list I create a new list and render everything into that list and then I just disable that uh, and I just um, make an end list right here so this is basically the the entire thing which I have changed and also in the display I don't call the render height map function but call this call list function which is basically rendering out this the high, uh, display list immediately to the screen so let me just go into that folder so display list and let me oops that's not the command and let me just quickly compile it actually I don't need to compile it's already compiled 
and it is immediate and it is uh, very quick and very high fps as you can see it's not laggy at all it's completely playable it's a very smooth animation let's see the fps so the fps is uh, around 250 approximately if i average all of these together so let me just write into here 250 fps just from these few simple calls which i did like new list and call list and end list and gen generate list and it is also very simple to make and is it supported unfortunately it's not supported in modern opengl but as you can see it uh, gives us a huge performance increase let's see if the vertex array actually beats the old one because the vertex array is a bit newer than the display list so let me quickly go into that folder vertex array this should be it oops i have a file here which i wanted to show you so let me just quickly open up the opengl.cpp and let's show you what is the difference so right here in the render height map function before the render height map function i just created two structures and two vectors so this is obviously for the vertexes vertices rather and this is for the uv coordinates okay let's see what is here so basically i just first calculate the vertices and the uv coordinate position this is a relatively simple test if i just open this up basically i just uh, use a double for loop and uh, and goes like uh, zero vertex one two three so basically just uh, creating a grid i uh, there should be nothing new in there as you can see i just use the i times size so i is the column so downward and the size is basically the distance between the the two vertex the other position so the y position which is the height is just simple the height from the image times this uh, scaling value and the j is similar to the uh, to the i except this is going in this direction so right there and that's all so i just generate this six, uh, 15 value in this case because it's a 4 by 4 and including the 0 this is 16 value i'm uh, just generating as a grid and a little bit more challenging is to make these indices work as they should be the indices should be uh, like this so i just in uh, so make with a double for loop the double for loop will actually go from zero to three so right here so it doesn't go to the last one and it doesn't go to the last one because i need to get the vertex which is left from the current position and if i would go here to the three then i will get a uh, vertex which is which one is the uh, left from this free vertex uh, this vertex which is free right actually this is right not left anyway so the point is that i just go from zero one two and then i just get the triangles which is zero one two so i just get the current position which is i j then i just add the j to one so i just go to the right and then i just go to go one down and that's pretty much one triangle and uh, this is zero one four one two five two three six and so on and i get i need another triangle down here to create the quad which is needed which is pretty much just good that's so one four five so now you get the logic just uh, see the code it's hard to explain but the but this is not very complicated code at all so i just get the indices this is the first triangle the up triangle and this is the bottom triangle and yes that that it is so let's go into the display function which is a little bit more complicated than last time we need to enable the client states for the vertex and the texture coordinate because well we have vertices and texture coordinate then i just tell where the data is and then i just enable the texturing just to make sure the texturing enabled what else is here i bind the texture and using the gl draw elements function 
which uh, which is waiting for the indices as well. So I just drawing triangles. I draw this many triangles, how many indices there are, basically, and then uh, then I use the array uh, for the indices which I have generated to tell where are the indices, and that's pretty much it. So this is a lot of extra work. This is not as simple as previously. Let's see if this extra work actually paid out. And I haven't changed directory, did I? <laughs> All right, so this is not display list. This is a vertex array. That's right, so let me run the program. So if I run the program, as you can see, it's pretty smooth. There are no lags in here. Though the camera movement is a little bit sm uh, slower than with the display list for some reason, which is kind of obvious. Why? Because we have less FPS. Uh, but it's not laggy as it, the immediate mode was. And I can move around. It's uh, playable. And let's see if our hard work actually play, uh, paid off. No, it doesn't pay off. We have about 70 FPS, FPS, so let me just fill in the table. So 70 FPS, approximately. Was it simple? No, I wouldn't say it was simple, so it was not simple. Okay, and it was also not supported in the modern OpenGL. Our last hope is the vertex buffer object to beat all of these other modes, all of these old modes. So let's see, I'm just going to change my directory to the vertex buffer object uh, folder. And let's actually open up the code to just basically see what it's containing. I also use shaders in here. I copied the shader.cppn shader.h header file. And also I'm using the modern matrices. Uh, I know that uh, in my tutorial series the name for this was matrices, not pipeline. But I'm just going to use pipeline right here. Uh, because I made this uh, outside of the tutorial. Alright, and uh, let me open up the CPP. And also let me open up the two shaders which we might want to take a look at. So the fragment shader is pretty simple, it's just getting the texture and getting the texture coordinate and that's pretty much the fragment color. Vertex shader actually, first of all, just pretty much again simple, just using, uh, just testing out the UV coordinate so we get nice interpolation. I just using the model view projection matrix to tell, uh, to basically uh, put everything where they sh they're supposed to be. But let's go to the opengl.cpp uh, file and let's see what's in here. Alright, the render height map function first part which generating the vertexes and the vertices and the indices are pretty much unchanged. This second part is the one which is changed or more precisely added. We are generating the buffers, filling up the buffers right here. So there should be nothing new in here if you are already familiar with the vertex buffer objects. We did this in the mesh.cpp file if you have followed along. I did the same with the indices and that was pretty much the, the render height map function. So let's go to the display function and see how this is going to work out. So first of all I'm just getting the location where the attribute values should be sent. And then I just uh, uh, binding the textures and the buffers, enabling the vertex arrays pretty much right here. And then updating the matrices so we get nice camera movement. And what else? We are just pretty much rendering uh, right here. So that's all. So let's see if it actually beats it, beats the display list. So let me just run this program. And it's definitely smoother than the display, uh, than the just simple display array. We can move along. This is pretty playable. But let's see. No, it doesn't. What a surprise. This is approximately 200 and, well, 200 and, I don't know, 200 FPS approximately. Was it simple? No, it wasn't simple. And is it supported? Yes, it's supported. Because that's the only one which is supported. Alright, so as you can see, the display list actually provided the uh, 
uh, best FPS, so the best speed. This is a little bit surprising. I saw the vertex buffer object will beat the display this, but it did not. So, uh, but this is the only one which is supported, and you can actually modify the data in the vertex buffer object, unlike in the display list there you cannot modify it so i guess there is a price for everything you can modify it but you get a lower fps and it's a little bit more complicated but that's pretty much it this should conclude the tutorial if you want to download the sources and check for check in your hardware your hardware may be better for the new opengl because i have an older video card so your new card may be like vertex buffer object more than like a display list but this was my little speed test and uh, yeah that's pretty much it thank you for watching and have a